uh, not the foreign minister, but their their uh, oil minister, is uh, the the co-chair of this meeting along with the Saudi uh, the, uh, minister, and you know, acting on behalf of Vladimir Putin and Mohammed bin Salman, and they just cut oil production by two million barrels a day. That's you know two percent of world oil production, and that's not inconsequential. We're going, you know, the goal that they have explicitly stated is to get oil back up above $100 a barrel, which means the gasoline prices in the United States will be back up above $5 and arguably above $6 a gallon, just in time for the election. Now, do you think that Putin and Mohammed bin Salman might really like to get rid of Democrats and have Donald Trump or some other autocrat who's willing to throw in with Hungary and Bolsonaro and, and Russia and whatnot and say, yeah, 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 we don't need we don't need no stinking democracy here in the United States. You think they might uh, be inclined to think that way? I do. I mean, I've, I'm fully expecting them to be thinking that way. So, by the way, the uh, SpaceX rocket uh, just took off for the uh, International Space Station. It's all over the TV, but um, everything is good. Five, five astronauts going up to the space station. So, here we are. Uh, Jerome Powell is raising interest rates to try to stop inflation. And that raising of interest rates has already led to a softening of the U.S. economy. We see, you know, uh, Amazon just laid off 100,000 people. Mortgage companies are going bankrupt. They're laying off people like there's no tomorrow. Interest rates are above 6% now. Home mortgage rates, in some cases, in some places, approaching 7%. Um, uh, houses are sitting on the market longer. I mean, these are all the leading indicators of a recession at the very least. And at the same time, because when the United States raises interest rates, pretty much every other country in the world has to raise their interest rates because if they fail to, their currency will start to depreciate against the dollar, which can really damage other countries. So when Powell raises interest rates, the rest of the world has to raise interest rates. Now, this was not so much the case just 20 years ago, but it's very much the case right now. And so here we have, we're raising interest rates, which could throw us into a recession to try to deal with an inflation that was caused initially by supply sh shocks and a, uh, a change in the demand curve, shall we say. You know, during 2020, and early 2021, nobody was buying anything or people were buying goods, but not services. There was a very real shift in the way that people, you know, that American consumers consumed things, as they say. And now we're seeing, you know, and then, and then you know, when COVID was over, essentially, I mean, it's now endemic rather than pandemic, um, you know, people started buying things again, including services, including travel, including, you know, everything. And so there was a sudden burst in demand at the same time that China is still playing lockdown and limiting supply in some cases. And then on top of all of this, you had the 2 million barrel, 2.4 million barrel a day supply cut of oil that Donald Trump negotiated. Actually, Jared Kushner negotiated this in 2020 so that the oil patch down in Texas would stop going bankrupt. You had small oil operations going bankrupt all across the state when the price of oil was down to $30 a barrel or in the 30s, in the 2020s. And so, you know, Jared goes over and talks to Mohammed bin Salman, his good buddy. They, you know, stay up all night chatting. And uh, the next thing you know, there's a huge oil production cut. Then Biden goes to Saudi Arabia and basically begs the king to increase production. And he increases production by 200,000 barrels a day. Well, today they cut production by 2 million barrels a day. And this is a, a, you know, an absolute and direct slap in the face of the Western democracies because this is going, you, you think the politics right now are ugly in Sweden and Italy? This is going to hit Germany. This is going to hit France. This is going to hit, I mean, all of Northern Europe, but particularly the, the, uh, on the continent, not so much skin, uh, you know, is getting a lot of their petroleum from uh, Norway. But this is, this is, this is going to be a big deal. And, you know, we need to get ready for it. So what can we do? Well, and, and why is the world flipped out about this? Here we have the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD, just released a report yesterday 
in which they they just came right out and said, quote, the world is headed toward a global recession and prolonged stagnation unless we quickly change the current policy course of monetary and fiscal tightening in advanced economies. This is the United Nations. Again, the whole world is paying attention to this because when we raise interest rates, the rest of the world is basically forced to. And now the UN is saying, wait a minute, guys. We have, uh, and then you look at the analysis from the Federal Reserve, and I, I published this, so this chart from the Federal Reserve of uh, St. Louis on my, uh, you know, in my article today at HartmanReport.com. And it's uh, corporate profits from 1950 to today, and in billions of dollars. And you see corporate profits, you know, uh, basically around 2000, they start climbing and, and uh, they, they soften a little around 2010. You've got the recession there. Um, but then starting in 2020, they, and then they flatten out again at around eight, you know, around 1,000 or $1,200 billion, $1.2 trillion. And then suddenly they spike in 2021 and 2022 to now they're, they're almost to 2,300 billion dollars, in other words, $2.3 trillion of corporate profits. We've never seen corporate profits this high, never in the history of the world. And as Robert Reich points out over at his Substack newsletter, he said, yet the Fed isn't paying attention. Minutes of the Fed's last policy meeting reveal seven mentions of wage or wages, 17 of labor market, eight of job or jobs, and not one mention of profit. And yet, inflation is when prices go up. Prices are going up because we've got basically giant monopolies in the United States. Reagan stopped enforcing the Sherman Antitrust Act and the other antitrust acts, the Clayton Act and the, uh, the Antitrust Act of 1957. And when he stopped enforcing those, we had this explosion of corporate activity, the mergers and acquisitions mania of the 1980s. And that was followed by the end of competition in America. We now have oligopolies in basically every industry. So how should we deal with this, this uh, inflation crisis that in part is being caused by the high price of oil and gas, in part is being caused by the fact that there's basically no competition in the American economy any longer. The average American family spends $5,000 a year more than the average Canadian family for everything from cell phone service to internet service to, to prescription drugs because of all these monopolies in America. So what should we do? Well, number one, we need to start breaking up the big monopolies. And in my, in my list, big oil, big banks, airlines, internet service providers, big pharma, cell companies, media operations, and pharmaceuticals are a great place to start. We also need to reverse the 2015 change in US law that allowed us to export American oil. We need to keep our oil at home. And we need to change our policy toward Venezuela so that their oil can move into our markets. I mean, there's a bunch of things that we can do. The other thing that we should be doing, which is what the United Kingdom just did, is they just put a windfall profits tax on their oil industry. They're looking at the same numbers we are, and they're saying, hey, the oil industry, the fossil fuel industry, is making profits like they have never made in the history of the world and we are going to tax some of those excess profits, and we're gonna cycle that money back to consumers so that they can pay for these increased fossil fuel costs. Which, by the way, is exactly what UNCTAD, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, is, is exactly what UNCTAD is calling for. They're saying, you know, put into place windfall profits tax. Well, the United Kingdom just did. Why, you know, why can't we here? Well, obviously, you know, every Republican is gonna be opposed to this, but I think the Democrats might be able to get this passed by reconciliation. I'm not sure if the reconciliation window is altogether closed for the year or, you know, if this is something that they can pull off. But I think they should. So those are my solutions. Do you have thoughts on this? What are you expecting to come out of this radical action from OPEC this morning? I think it's going to throw our politics into chaos. I'm expecting that, you know, uh, probably starting in uh, probably next week or the week after that, you're gonna start seeing gas price ads all over the place. Get ready. This is the Tom Hartman Program. We'll be back with, you, with more of the news of the day and your calls. I wanna get into this threat of civil war as well, right after the break. <laughs> 